Hi guys, how are you? It's me Magnus. Uh, before we start this video, taking a look at the sewer scene, I just wanted to say that I have started to make some posters, as you can see here in the background. So, when everything is working the way I want, I will upload them in the community tab here on YouTube. So if you want some free posters, because they are free, <laughs> you can download them in the community tab, and you can print them yourself, you can use them as a foam background, or you can do whatever you want. So, when everything is working the way I want, I will upload them in the community tab, so keep your eye uh, at the community tab here on YouTube. So in today's video we're going to take a look at the sewer scene inside of my 3D software. But first we are going to talk about reference images and stuff like that. And then we're going to, I'm going to show you the, the actual scene we're using in the short film. I will move around in the scene and talk about things and, and stuff like that. So yeah, let's begin to talk about some reference images. So here's the reference board that started the entire project of creating the, the sewer scene. To start things off, this is the scene from the comic, so this is the main inspiration for the look I was trying to achieve. Uh, as we can see we have some pipes and we have water here and we have some wires and brick walls and here we have, I don't know if this is a concrete wall or something like that. So yeah, this is the, the main inspiration. The first thing I did was to watch the first live action TMNT movie. I knew it was a sewer in that movie, so that's why I watched it. And I also liked that movie a lot. This is how the sewer looks like in that movie. And this is also how I imagine a sewer to look like. And I also think many people uh, believe that the sewer is looking like this. But does the sewer always look like this with these shapes, the round shapes? So I went to Google and I started to search for real sewers. So. Here is some of the reference images I was using when I was creating the sewer. Uh, this is from Suicide Squad. I kind of like this image. And this is from the first Michael Bay movie. And I kind of like this as well. And in all these images, it's something I like. Uh, like in this one, I like the, the concrete. And I like the dirt on the floor here. And I kind of like these pipes as well. And like in this image, I like the cable management. I wanted to see how you know the cables are hanging on the wall. And in this image, I like the concrete wall. And here we have a brick wall. So I almost did one wall, uh, a concrete wall, and one wall, uh, a brick wall. But that didn't happen, but almost. And in this image, I like the, the feel of it. And I really like this image as well. We have some pipes, and we have these wires and cables and stuff going around here. So I like this one a lot and also the feeling of it. And I picked this image because of the concrete is really nice. And I also wanted to see the, the steps here when you're climbing up, uh, up or down the sewer. And here we have some more steps. So in each of these pictures, there's something I like. I didn't want to take, yeah, let's say this image and, uh, and re replicate it into, you know, a 3D scene. I wanted to take inspirations from you know, some parts of every image, if that makes sense. And sometimes I just wanted to have, you know, the feeling on some images. And if we take a look at these images from real sewers, they does not have this round shape. Many of them has, you know, this shape instead, as you can see here, this one as well. And it's all, all also like that in a comic, you can see here. So I didn't want to create this shape, I wanted to make it look you know, more real. So I wanted this shape instead. Here we can see it as well. So yeah, this is the reference images. So now we can take a look at the first test I did. This is the first room you are seeing in the short film. The camera is moving, you know, something like this. And as you can see, I used a brick wall in the beginning because, you know, we have some brick wall here and we have a brick like a brick room or a brick path or, or something like that in this image. But if we take a look at uh, uh, some real sewers, there are a lot of concrete. As you can see, concrete, 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 uh, yeah, concrete. And we have concrete and we have here we have some bricks and concrete and concrete. So when I was looking at this one, I was like, this looks like a horror game or something. And this does not look like a real sewer. So I was trying out with some concrete uh, textures instead and this I think is much better than this one and this one captured the feeling I wanted so much more than this one. So I started to, to play around, I imported the, the 3D character and some pipes and I did these steps. Then I just started to build the scene from, from this one. 
We can also take a look at this one. This is the first test I did in the main room, you know, the big one when the turtle is kneeing. We have a Deadpool character here, but it's just for reference. And as you can see, this room is way too big, right? But I kind of like the pipes uh, and the lighting is pretty cool as well. But I decided to remodel it because it was it was too big. So here is an early test I did as well for uh, from the main room. And here we have another one. And as you can see, I had a really blue tint to it. And I didn't like that, <laughs> to be honest, because if we take a look at this image, it almost looks looks like he's underwater, right? And there there is a lot of fog, way too much. So I started to play around with the color grading and you know I uh, imported more models and I you know just played around trying to figure things out and then I just started to build more and more from from you know this scene imported pipes and then this is almost the finished uh, scene I have some more dirt on the ground uh, and stuff like that so yeah here's the, the finished scene here's another image and as you can see I wanted to have this this shape and not you know, just a round, round shape. <laughs> so yeah, that was the reference images. So now we are going to take a look at the sewer scene inside of Autodesk Maya, my 3D software. So yeah, here it is. It looks a bit strange, like almost like a little house or something, small house. And it looks really gray and boring, right? <laughs> uh, we can actually lift the roof like this. Take a look inside. This is the main room where the turtle is kneeing and all of that. But we can maybe start with the first room over here. So this is how it looks like. <laughs> uh, the turtle is standing here and he's punching the door and the camera is moving, you know, something like this. So yeah, this is the first room you're seeing in the short film. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I should say. Uh, creating things like this, you know, you can move around and you can build your scene however you want. Maybe this one should be like this instead or yeah, something like that, doesn't matter. So yeah, I don't know how much I should talk about other softwares, uh, but I can mention that I have used Megascans, Quixel Megascans a lot, like for the texturing, texturing the floor, the walls and the ceiling. It's all done with Quixel Megascans and Quixel Megascans is, is basically a software where you can download textures and you can import them, the textures you're downloading into your 3D scene. Uh, so I've used that software a lot. And also sometimes uh, when I wanted to have some blood on the floor and you know some customs, customs uh, textures and modify the textures like this hatch here or maybe these things on the wall. I used a program called uh, Quixel Mixer because those programs, Megascans and Mixer, are working really great together. So you can download textures from Megascans and you can import them to Mixer and then you can modify, modify the texture in Mixer and then you can export them to, uh, to your 3D scene. And those programs, uh, Megascan and Mixer, works in Maya, Blender, Cinema 4D, you know, almost every 3D softwares. So yeah, here, here's the first room. And as you can see here, it looks a bit strange because I only have three steps, but I framed the image at something like this, and then I don't need these steps. If you have, you want to have as few 3D objects in your scene as possible because the render time will be faster and the scene will be easier to handle. So if you have something out of frame, uh, delete it. <laughs> so yeah, the, it was the first room. And these things you are seeing here, it's lights. So you have to, to light the scene as well. You cannot just build the scene and click render, but I will talk more about that later. So yeah, this was the first scene. And I can also say that I used Substance Painter a lot for the texturing as well. Uh, like this sign and the bloody coat and uh, the pipes and, and stuff like that. And I also used Substance Painter for all the weapons, like the the, the, the katana and the sai and the nunchuck and all that stuff. So I used two programs for texturing. Oh, look here, I, I see an error. So, <laughs> so this is the main room. And as you can see, it looks really gray and boring. And it almost looked like a really bad video game, like a really bad PlayStation 1 video game. 
I didn't mean to say a bad video game. What I was trying to say was uh, an old and an ugly looking character. Uh, not character. I think you understand what I'm trying to say. An old video game. This looks like an old video game, right? <laughs> so I just wanted to show you guys how it looks in here inside of my 3D software and yeah, how things are looking. So this is how it looks. I can talk a bit about 3D models. Chris, he did the turtle, but I will talk more about that in the next video. Some of the 3D models I have used a mega scans, and some of them I have modeled myself, and some of them have I purchased. I know a lot of people, including me, are struggling with using other, other people's 3D models inside your own productions, uh, because you haven't made that yourself. Uh, but the thing is, if someone has made a 3D model, they have uploaded to a site for you to purchase, to download and to use in your 3D scene. You know, the, the, the main purpose for them is for you to download and use them. So it's nothing wrong to buy, pro to, to buy 3D models and stuff like that and use in your own 3D scenes or your own productions. It's the, the purpose of, of that. <laughs> so yeah. But guys, there should be a common sense in everything and stealing things are not okay, okay? So only use things that you are allowed to use, okay? By the way, did you know this? This entire time, Hedwig has been laying here with me. So yeah, I think that was like everything I wanted to show you. Just a quick little guided tour in the sewer, <laughs> if I can say it like that. Here's the weapons, the book. So I guess I just wanted to show you how it looks like when we are building the scene, when we are animating the turtle. You know, this is how it looks like when we are creating the short film and working with the short film. Uh, so when we are animating the turtle, this is how it looks like. And then I need to render it and everything looks so much better. Uh, and when you're rendering things, there's so much more than just pressing a button. You need to light the scene in a cool and correct way. And you need to put motion blur and depths of field and, and a lot of stuff. But I can talk more about that now. Let's talk about the rendering now. This is how it looks before we do any rendering. And if I press the render button, it's going to look like this. Black. That's why we don't have any lights in our scene. Maya has this enable default light setting. And if we enable that one, Maya does the lighting for us. And if I press render again, it will look like this. This looks really ugly, doesn't it? Almost like that bad video game look again. And that's why we want to put up our lights ourselves, because we don't want it to look like this. So we want to create our own lights and set them up in a way so it looks cool because we want cool renders, right? <laughs> and then you might want to have some motion blur, depth of field, maybe you want some lens flares and things like that. So when everything is done and ready to render, we can press the render button again. And now it's going to look like this. So much better, right? Going from this to this. So here we have another example. This is how it looks before we have done any lighting ourselves. This is just with a default Maya lighting. And if we do some lighting, put up the lights and all of that stuff, it can look something like this. <laughs> and once again, going from this to this, it's a huge difference, right? So if you just import all your 3D models and starting to build your scene and then hit render, this is how it's going to look like. So the rendering, the lighting and you know all the render settings are really important if you want to, to make it look good. So that was everything for the rendering. Let's move on. That was everything for this video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for watching the main The Last Ronin animation video. Me and my team members, we really, really appreciate all the support you are giving us. And I know very many of you out there want me to make more The Last Ronin animations. Will I do that? I will answer that, but in another video. The next video will be about the, the turtle model. So I will show the turtle model, the turtle rig, and I will also show you early designs we did and concept art and, and, and stuff like that. So that video will be much more interesting than this one to watch. So keep an eye for that video. And also keep an eye on the community tab if you want to download some free posters. That was everything for today. Thank you so, so much for all the support you are giving us. And yeah, I think that was everything. Hej då allihopa, ha en bra, så syns vi sen. Åh, oh, äntligen slut. Och solen skin lite.
First you say my game is bad and then you say I'm ugly and old. Fuck you.